Next follow a few comments on how to fit variogram models. This is actually very technical material and a little beyond the scope of this class, but the general idea is that the parameters are estimated from the empirical variogram. So it's really a two-step process. In the first step, you come up with a really good uh, empirical variogram. That means you do sensitivity analysis for the number of bins, the size of the bins, the cutoff distance, and all these other elements that we talked about previously. And then based on those few points, you fit a curve through it. Um, and some methods are based on a variogram cloud, but these tend to be uh, problematic. Uh, for one, uh, very quickly, the, the size of the data set, because it includes all the unique pairs, becomes very, very large. But also, the uh, variogram cloud uh, tends to be dominated by points at larger distances and the effect of outliers is also pretty important so that the fit of the curve that results from the exercise actually is not necessarily that good. So even though it may seem at first sight that because you use more data points you would have a better fit, in practice that's actually not the case. So in practice we go this two-step route where you first get the empirical variogram and then um, fit the curve. So, for example, we have a spherical variogram. We need to find three parameters. We need to find the sill, the range, and the nugget. And so how do we get these three parameters from what is typically a very small number of points in the empirical variogram? And <clears throat> there's all kinds of uh, uh, approaches to this. There's some uh, grounded in practice, even eyeball methods where you just kind of figure out by eye what is a good fit, but um, essentially it's a nonlinear model fit. And to get a nonlinear model fit started, you need good starting values for the parameters. So 0, 0, 0 is not going to do a very good job. So typically what happens is you start by literally looking at the empirical variogram and trying out a number of different parameters and see how the curve fits. And then if you get one that seems reasonable, then you put these parameters, enter them as starting values in the optimal fit routine, which is a nonlinear model fit. And then that when that converges, you have your final set of parameters. Um, a lot of technical issues, as I mentioned, a little beyond our scope. A main one is the presence of heteroscedasticity uh, because the number of pairs in each bin of the empirical variogram tends not to be constant. As a result of that, the, the quality of the estimate of the semi-variogram in that bin tends to vary, and it varies with the number of pairs. The smaller the number of pairs, the poorer the quality. In other words, the smaller the number of pairs, the larger the variance. And unless the number of pairs in each bin is exactly the same, the variance of the, uh, the or the precision of the estimate of that one point in the bin that we use for the empirical variogram will not be the same, will not be constant. So. All these things need to be taken care of in the estimation process. But just to give you an idea, here are a few slides that illustrate the process. First, we look at the variogram cloud plot, and we fit, by a nonlinear non minimization, some curve through it. And then, uh, so we, we take the specification of the spherical variogram, so we need to figure out what is the nugget, what is the cell, what is the range. And as you see in this example, this doesn't necessarily work that well. Next is more traditional. For example, here's our empirical variogram from the um, residuals in the second order trend surface regression for the Baltimore house prices that we used in the previous class as well. And so, you know, by eye, 
you see a rough shape of increasing uh, values for the semivariogram, and then they reach some kind of a, a point where they start to flatten out, or at least roughly flatten out. So the process is that you kind of guess, you know, the nugget, let's say, is 100. So uh, the sill, where it becomes horizontal, roughly 400. So then the partial sill is the difference between the sill and the nugget, that's 300. And the range is just, you know, by I, roughly 20. So what we do with this is, you know, once we get a good starting point, then we put it in an optimization routine that actually goes through the process of fitting, you know, iteratively improving the fit of the curve, and then you end up with a, a set of best parameters. And as you see in our case, we weren't too far off, but on the other hand, we weren't exact either. So the nugget, as a result of this optimization process, was 128, roughly, partial sill 291, so the overall variance is a little over 400, and the range is 25 and a half instead of the 20 that we eyeballed. Importantly, because it is an optimization process, we do get a measure of fit. In this case, the sum of squared errors, and that is a way to compare uh, different models for the same data. Because all the models are fit on the same empirical variogram. And just to complete this discussion, uh, we do the same thing for the um, exponential variogram. So we start by guessing some parameters for the nugget, in this case uh, a 150, partial sill 400, and a range of 25. Uh, you have to remember for the exponential variogram that these are not actually the range, uh, but these are um, the practical range, you know, the 95% value, because the range is infinite uh, in principle. So again, we start with these uh, values, we plug them into a nonlinear optimization routine, and out comes the best fit. And the nugget is actually very close to 100, partial sill 356, so the, sh the sill is more like 450 in this case, and the range is much shorter than before, it's 1235. The sum of squared errors uh, now lets us compare the two models. So in this model, it's 31,286. Of course, that's all in the units that we have. And in the, um, exp the spherical model, it's 36,852. So between the two models, the exponential model has the better fit of the two. And so this is a typical process in practice. We have the um, empirical variogram. We pick um, one or two or several theoretically acceptable variogram specifications. Uh, the most commonly used ones are the spherical and exponential, but the others are by no means less valid. They're just a little more complicated to set up and sometimes a little harder to interpret. But we pick the specification, we look at the empirical variogram, we basically eyeball or guess some starting values, these then go into a nonlinear optimization routine, out come the final parameter estimates, as well as a measure of fit. And next we're going to see how we then apply these estimates to obtain spatial prediction.